winning the Delano Apollo Award for the semi-final event of the 2012 season is Davina Henton in the number six Volpe. Uh, Henton won the pole in uh, heavy rain conditions because qualifying, of course, was in the wet. Of course, a um, 90-minute session in qualifying in the rain on this circuit is, uh, well, going to produce a very interesting starting grid, as you might notice here. None of the championship contenders qualified particularly well, and uh, there's some surprises on the field, like Marcus Lina on the outside of the front row. Anthony Griffith and Gaspar Souza in particular qualified very well also. De Souza and uh, Danny Sovin are going to be running for the Independence Trophy, and uh, they are going to be part of the focus for today, because this, of course, is the final race for the Independence Trophy. And uh, Gaspar de Souza pretty much needs to finish on the podium, and Danny Sovin, uh, assuming de Souza doesn't finish on the podium, needs to finish, I believe, around 20th. So we're going to have to see how that turns out. The Drivers' Championship is also very close, with only 27 points separating Otto Kekkonen in first from Luciano Savarol in fourth. So, all four of those guys have a very realistic chance at taking the points lead this race. However, should any one of them be 71 points or more out of the lead, it's all over for them. Therefore, we're probably going to have a very interesting race ahead of us. Dan, off to you. Thank you, Lance. Davina Henton in car number six and Marcus Leonard in car triple nine on the front row. Marcus Leonard won this race from the pole last year. This is Leonard's home race, as here we go. Uh, Marcus Leonard did not get a very good start, but he is one of the bolder drivers in this series. Marcus Leonard fighting back. But Davina Henton seems a lot less timid than usual, as she is really trying to keep Marcus Leonard at bay in front of his home crowd, and that is a very, very difficult thing to do. Gaspar D'Souza attacking Scott Bates for third. Marcus Leonard and Davina Henton side by side coming down into four. This long, sweeping right-hander until we get to the mouse shaft turns five and six. Davina Henton has the spot, as so does Scott Bates, who's gotten third away. Yamino Tenshi moving up to fifth, as there is Henton now cleared Marcus Leonard in the triple nine car. Here's uh, going a bit further back in the field, there you see Arto Kakin in that uh, blue 9 car, the blue and black 9 car. Uh, he is the championship leader on 561 points coming into this race. But Peter Short in the 19 car is out of the race already. He's pulled off the, to the side of the course. He has no second or third gear on the 19 car. Uh, he had uh, gearbox problems in the morning warm-up, and it looks like they've resurfaced uh, now. Black Diamond Reliability, a bit of a joke this year. Here is Melanie Kleveno, the New York winner, as, it comes in, as she comes in turn nine. Oh, no! Michael Sykes in the 44 car just comes dogpiling on into the back of the 74 car. And Kleveno in trouble early on. Melanie Kleveno is really looking forward to this race, but to Michael Sykes in the 44 car just came hammering right into the back of her. Uh, Michael Sykes did uh, report some brake problems in the morning warm-up, and the team thought they had them fixed. Clearly, that wasn't the case. But uh, if you have that, uh, that kind of brake problems, I think you probably should be uh, a little bit more circumspect on the first lap, especially uh, for someone of Sykes' experience. But, uh, well, uh, even though the damage in that car was fixable, the team did not bring Sykes back on the racetrack due to the brake problems. As you see Chris Allen looping his own car around after running in the back of Kurt Pliskin. Here's another view of that. Here is Trevin Terrell, though, in the 50 car going around the outside. A very bold move there. The only African-American driver in the field. Car number 50, Trevin Terrell in the Tutino. As he's side-by-side -side now, teammate Tyson Lautenschlager and the 08 car of Vijay Pushanda of India. As you see, one car in the grass. That is Yamino Tenchi in the 25 car. Tenchi's in trouble. So here we go into turn 14. There is Cleveno in the 74 car hounding the back of the Tutinos as um, she tries to make up some ground. Packer Carroll, car number two, qualified very poorly. Now the second Volpe wasn't fast at all, even in the dry practice sessions, which is kind of a surprise considering he won a Quebec in the year. Oh, contact with Chris Johans in the 64. Um, car number 64 and Packer Carroll had contact there. As there you see Tenshi going off the track. They pulled the 25 car into the pits after the end of the first lap, and that was the end of the day for Tenchi. There was some terminal problems over there with the gearbox. Gaspar D'Souza needs a top four to win the Independence Trophy, and that's assuming Danny Savin doesn't score enough points to take it on his own. So the Portuguese driver really has his work cut out for him. He wasn't expected to do terribly well here, but he is clearly showing a lot of uh, fighting spirit here. He's trying to stave off Matthias Taubin, a far superior Gessler, and uh, the D'Souza giving it his all right now in British Columbia, the HLR circuit. As you see Kevin Dwyer now trying to sweep around the outside of him, but he is certainly not going to let Dwyer get by that easy. Fighting back, that Alex Harrison zero car has never really been a serious contender for the Independence Trophy. This is the best shot they've ever had at winning it. Here's Adrian Devereaux, the championship, uh, well, he was a championship leader most of the season. He's two points behind Arto Kekkonen coming into this race on 559 points. 
He's running back in 15th place. That's Lewis Kingston directly in front of him in the uh, uh, Cubs mobile. As here goes Adrian Dever on the inside of Kingston in turn nine. Pretty uh, pretty late in the breaks there. De oh, Martinez slides a bit wide behind him. As uh, Dever now side by side with Lewis Kingston, who has a win earlier in the year. And uh, Kingston really trying to uh, get in the, uh, solidify his position in the top 10 in the championship. He's done a very good job this year in that 17 car, uh, which is um, kind of a surprise because we uh, we expected Lewis Kingston to do very well. However, um, that 17 car has not been very quick at all all season. Uh, anyway, here's uh, Melanie Cleveno in the uh, 74 car. She looks like she ran into the back of Vijay Pushana and spun her own car around. Uh, we're not sure if there's going to be an active time penalty assessed for that. I doubt it. They didn't hand one out to Chris Hans earlier, so the HLR uh, stewards seem to be a lot more lenient than uh, the stewards elsewhere. Mika Pasanen in car number 12 is at a pretty good start. He's running up in 13th place. He's uh, going to be out of a drive because uh, Lynx Racing did announce that they were not going to re-sign either, uh, either Majestic Motorsports' current drivers. And that's a bit of a pity, really, because Pasanen's giving this car a really good run. Scott Bates in the 88 car is uh, sitting in third right now. Got a pretty good start for the Oklahoma native, but uh, he's going to need to pick it up a little bit if he's going to uh, contend for the win, I think, because Davina Henton is setting a blistering pace this early on. Matthias Taub closing in on him. Here is Taub's teammate, Arto Kekkonen, the championship leader, up to 11th place. He can lock up the title if he is 71 points ahead of all of his title rivals. Here is Ian Cooper in the 777 car, and he's got a problem as well. So the 777 car pulling off the course. He had a pretty good start as well. But uh, that bright pink car is going to be uh, out of the race, and uh, the well, that's a really bright pink on that car. It might be uh, merciful because <laughs> that is a really bright pink. Here is Marcus Leonard and Scott Bates now doing battle for second. They're both very late on the break, coming into nine. As Leonard is going to try to hold off Scott Bates, as Matthias Taub goes around Kevin Dwyer, it looks like, or is just holding Dwyer off, maybe. But anyways. Marcus Leonard is uh, probably going to be losing a sponsor at the end of the season due to all the trouble that they've had uh, throughout various uh, locations in the United States. But anyway, Scott Bates really working over Leonard as they come into 12. And Leonard runs a bit wide. You don't really want to go off there in the Astro turf. Not a whole lot of grip out there. Leonard Roderick ends just on the outside of the points, battling Charlie Waters, who's having a really good weekend, actually, for his standards, even though Anthony Griffith really outqualified him. 26-year-old Davina Henton of Woodford, London, has really had a good string of uh, good string of races lately. Uh, Henton told me that the VCO4, the Volpe VCO4, works very well here because of all the high-speed corners and, of course, Volpe's legendary performance and uh, under braking, which makes you wonder why uh, Packer Carroll's not doing so well because Carroll wanted a very similar racetrack. Of course, I um, rode Gatineau in Quebec. Of course, uh, rode Gatineau not nearly as uh, hilly or uh, rather a lot more hilly than this circuit here at the HLR circuit in near British Columbia. Arto Kakinen in trouble in car number nine. I believe he's got a flat tire in that car and that he's going to need a pit, but uh, fortunately he doesn't have too far to go because here's the last corner. That's turn 18 and there's the pits. Anthony Griffith also into the pits in the 29 car. He's been, had some contact, I think, because you can see the rear end there. But uh, this does not seem to be an unscheduled stop, which means this is a... Uh, very rather mindless strategy by the Dalton guys, which is uh, rather, uh, which is a bit of a shame because he was off to a good start. Another guy off to a good start is Kevin Dwyer in the 72 car. They brought the retro soda can livery to uh, this race because he won, well, Brazil in it. Anyway, he's off to a pretty good start running in fourth. A, a good new, uh, run in New York has given Dwyer a lot of confidence, so uh, he's been feeling rather good about his chances this week. Dwyer did tell me uh, during practice that he doesn't expect to be in contention for the win, but he believes the top five is possible, maybe an outside shot at a podium, but uh, he's going to he's got his work cut out for him because there's a lot of really fast cars breathing down his neck. So this 72 team is really going to have to hustle it. Marcus Leonard, this is his best run of the season by far. He dominated here last season, and uh, he won't be driving full-time next year either, which is a bit of a shame, but he'll bring his... Uh, 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 TM Lights and Arla Team FPO to the TM Master Cup Series with Ebenezer Quiggles Jr. and Zelda Ashby as the drivers. I don't know what chassis they'll be using next season. He could be running their own car, but uh, here's Arto Kakinen all the way back in 31st, so he's got uh, a whole litany of problems, and one of them is he's that far back. Here's uh, Zelda Ashby showing some, some of the speed that Yamino Tenshi did in qualifying. 
Uh, Owen DeGarmo said he wanted to end the season with a good, with a, on a good note. He might take uh, DeGarmo Enterprises and TM Lights since they won't be in the Cup Series next season. Robert Dorian may be driving uh, for this effort. Uh, Dorian, of course, has been running in the NAGT Series. Zelda Ashby will be driving for Marcus Leonard next year. We don't know what uh, chassis FBO will be using next year. Here is Greg Woodard in car number 41, who lost his chance at the Independence Trophy because he decided to imitate a bulldozer at Indianapolis. He wants to score a pretty good result today. <clears throat> Leonard Roderick is sitting in 17th place. He was very disappointed with New York, but uh, he feels pretty strong, uh, pretty good about Decatur, where he's always run very strongly, and he has five wins. Uh, Chris Johans at 64 car right in front of him has been pretty fast, but is still winless. But uh, he might be uh, uh, in with a chance of getting the Manicor Engineering ride, one of those two rides next season. And there's Azuma Kaziyama in the 18 car, and uh, we really don't know what he's doing next year. We're not sure if Nomoto wants to retain him or not, but Nomoto may be looking at signing whoever wins the TM Light Series Championship. Wouldn't that be interesting to see that happen? Here is Christian Hans entering the pit lane in car 64. Um, looks like this is a scheduled stop. Blake Camphausen in car number 15 may be headed off to the ASCC next season, or to Rick Milligan's team Lights team with an Independence Trophy shot, maybe. That would be an interesting thing to see. Trevin Terrell in car number 50 may be off to TM Lights as well, but neither of these guys are really doing their uh, silly season hopes a lot of good because this is the battle for 29th. Here's Davina Henson in car number 6, and she pits at the end of lap 10. So, the, um, the English woman really having a strong run. Scott Bates into the pits as well. Along with Marcus Leonard, uh, Kevin Dwyer is staying out, and so is Matthias Taub, Luciano Savarol, and uh, Yulian Asova. Adrian Devereaux staying out. Uh, that's a, a Zach Duff into the pits. He's having a pretty good start as well. And it looks like most everybody, most people are pitting on lap 10, and everyone that isn't pitting in lap 10, it looks like they may head in on the next lap because uh, it's like everyone's starting this race fairly conservatively on pit strategy. Scott Bates in the 88 car. Disastrous pit stop here. They've gotten, they've had some serious problems getting this car refired, it looks like, and he has not gotten the 88 car off the pit lane, and you can see how much time he is losing to uh, some cars. He's going to drop away down in the field. It's tragedy for Scott Bates early in the race, and a huge disappointment for Team EFR. This car was running so strongly earlier on in the race, and he could probably have contended for the win, but I don't think he's going to be able to do that unless a miracle happens. Danny Saab in the 81 car is up to 22nd place. Uh, full throttle racing and Danny Saab have been very strong this season. But uh, remember, if Danny Saab and Gaspar D'Souza um, tie on the Independence Trophy, or rather, if Danny Saab and Tom Moore tie, or if we have a tie in the Independence Trophy, it goes to championship points and not to um, the best result among them. So we'll have to see uh, how that turns out. Danny Saab is going to need to pick it up just a little bit, but it looks like he's right where he needs to be to just barely take the Independence Trophy away from Tom Moore, but it's still very early to call that. Chris Allen is back in 28th place as the fourth Independent in the race. That's a nice looking paint job in that 71 car, but it uh, hasn't really gone fast uh, all season long. I wonder if the team is letting Chris Allen down a little bit, because we've seen Allen do some spectacular things behind the wheel of a Master Cup car. Another man that's done some rather spectacular things behind the wheel of a Master Cup Series car is right here on the screen, Jasper Souza in the Zero car. Uh, sort of exploded out of the Master Cup scene because uh, he did very well to cater uh, and uh, as a rookie pretty much for uh, Hodges Walter Racing in a fourth car for them at the time. But uh, the Zero car having a pretty strong run. Here is Kevin Dwyer in the 72 car as he predictably leads the rest of the field into the pits on lap 11. Let's see where the 72 car comes out top right of the screen. That's where Kevin Dwyer is. There goes Henton. This should be a pretty good indication of how effective staying out an extra lap will be. Dwyer leaving the pits. Where is Leonard? Where is Marcus Leonard? There he is. Dwyer is going to beat Leonard out of the pits. Kevin Dwyer is now gone up into second place. But Leonard has gotten his tires all warmed up. And now Leonard is going to have a sh shot of getting by Dwyer. Here comes Leonard around the outside of three. But Dwyer trying to hold him off. This is going to bring D'Souza into the mix in the zero car. So Kevin Dwyer does a brilliant job of strategy for once with that team. Uh, looks like he's going to lose out to Leonard in the mousetrap. But here comes the Susan now hounding the back of the 72 car. Dwyer holding on, though. Looks like he's got third place rather solidly, though. But D'Souza in that zero car. Here he comes. He's uh, coming in with Dwyer. And here comes, whoa! Look at that! D'Souza on a very last second pass just decides to go right through and go right around Kevin Dwyer. But Dwyer trying to fight back now. Kevin Dwyer is trying to hang on to third. But Gasper D'Souza really wants that Independence Trophy. He wants this probably more than anything else because if he wins the Independence Trophy, that will really help his chances of getting a drive full-time next season, which is what he wants more than anything else. D'Souza by... 
uh, Kevin Dwyer, and now up into third. So Gaspar D'Souza in the zero car. A great move around Kevin Dwyer. Probably one of the best passes all season long. Here we are now with Davina Henson leading Marcus Leonard and Gaspar D'Souza. Matthias Taub is sitting in a solid uh, fifth right there, going a bit further back. As you see, Chris Johans, Leonard Roderick have not really uh, gotten away from each other. Adrian Devereaux sits up there in 10th place. Luciano Savaral in 7th. So um, all the title contenders but Arto Kakinen having a uh, fairly solid day so far. Uh, Arto Kakinen, of course, the championship leader. It's been a disastrous race for him so far. Melanie Cleveno is sitting all the way back there in 30th in the uh, 74 car for the Michelin Suns. Danny Savin, I should point out, uh, is running back in 28th. So uh, Danny Savin had apparently a disastrous pit stop. So the, uh, the FTR guys kind of dropping the ball at the last, at the uh, worst possible time. Here's Anthony Griffith in the 29 car. Uh, he's uh, really been having a good run, but he's off cycle. So I'm not too sure if everyone else here is going to be racing him as hard as they should. But Adrian Devereaux clearly is. As he gets by Anthony Griffith in turn 14, Griffith trying to fight back. But Devereaux's not going to be denied there. Griffith playing it nice there with Adrian Devereaux. And uh, to be fair, I think Devereaux had him under braking anyway. But uh, Griffith could have really forced the issue, and that would have led to a rather uh, monumental shunt. But Griffith is now dropped back to 10th, and Devereaux up to 9th. Uh, Adrian Devereaux, knowing that every point counts because he won the championship last season by a single point. He's already scored more points this season than he did last season. And uh, the Frenchman really looking to defend his Master Cup Series championship. If he does so, he'll be the first person since Leonard Roderick at the beginning of the new millennium to do that. So Adrian Devereaux in uh, car number one, carrying that number because, of course, he is the reigning champion. Uh, of course, he's got to stave off Leonard Roderick, who's won the championship four times. Luciano Savarol and, of course, Arto Kakinen. Here is Zelda Ashby in car 55, having a pretty good run so far. Uh, she's now going to, looks like, could be a battle for position here between Ashby, uh, Anthony Griffin, and Mika Possen in there. Uh, in the 12 car, Possen having a good run so far. Zelda Ashby in that 55 car, probably one of the more underrated drivers on the, on the uh, circuit right now. She's always been a very, very solid driver, and I think she'll do wonders over at FPO next year. But now she's really caught up to the back of, of Anthony Griffith. Just slowly reeled him in there, under braking, and now... She's going to have a go, maybe at Griffin in turn 14, or, oh, maybe a little bit wide there. Maybe lost it under, lost it at the very last second, and now Mika, there goes Mika Possen in through. Well, right, right as I was saying that Zelda Ashby had been a uh, pretty smooth uh, operator at the wheel, that happens. Uh, the legendary commentator's curse strikes again. Anyways, back up to Zach Duff in car number 5. I haven't really talked about him much, but he's having a spectacular day, considering how disastrous Zenos' season has been and how bad his season has been. I think Duff will probably be very impressed just with himself just to run this strongly today. The Xenos is probably uh, the second worst car on the grid other than the Tutino and, uh, and the Dalton Blackbird maybe. But uh, he's had a fantastic day so far and I think if Xenos can get both cars in the top 10, uh, they'll probably be celebrating it like a win. But that is Luciano Savaral in the altar right behind Duff and he's going to come screaming it on the inside but Duff gives him plenty of space because Luciano Savaral of course can sometimes get a little caught up with himself and cause some rather stupid collisions like he has done earlier in the year at Victoria for example when he ran over a back marker that he didn't need to and threw himself out of contention for the win but uh, Savaral clearly looks like he's using his head a bit more uh, today Oh, maybe not, because he's not playing nice with Zach Duff. I think Savarol ran Duff wide a little bit there. So, uh, Savarol does have a, a tendency to be very hot-headed, as I mentioned. And now we're looking up the back of Zach Duff's car. That is Adrian Devereaux directly behind him. Here comes Devereaux in the one car. The Hodges Walter boys having a very good run here at the HLR circuit. But Duff's not going to let Devereaux get away that easy. He's trying to fight back as they come into the bear trap. That turns 15 and 16. As you see, I'm coming through Nasova directly ahead of this mess. And, um, well, battle really, not really a mess. As Devereaux finally gets around Zach Duff. Here's the, uh, the aforementioned Yuli Nasova having a pretty good run so far in this fan design paint job in seventh place. Um, cats that we believe will, uh, won't be running at the same, uh, amount of funding that they, uh, next year that they have been this year. Because, uh, we believe they may be losing some of their pro primary sponsors, and, uh, that's rather a pity, really. Uh, Jose Luis Martinez is running back in 16th place, and uh, he's probably going to get cut. Ooh, bump and run, maybe. Uh, but 
Uh, and Katsov has said that they don't think their budget will be uh, as strong next year. And Martinez, of course, is being dropped from Katsov Engineering. He will be replaced by the very popular Arlo driver, Yevgeny Kuznetsov. And won't that be exciting to see Yevgeny Kuznetsov in uh, a second Katsov teamed up with Yulia Nasova? The um, uh, Yevgeny Kuznetsov, of course, has been running off and on uh, in the Master Cup Series over the past couple of years at special events. Here is Kevin Dwyer and Matthias Taub doing battle again. Taub really strong coming into the bear trap. Wow, that was a great run in, but he didn't get such a good run off. But as Kevin Dwyer in the 72's met, oh, Dwyer's all thought about pinching him, but Dwyer notices that Tom is there. He's giving him plenty of space. These two uh, drivers respecting each other very, very well as they come off turn 18. Final corner and onto the front straightaway and down into one. Dwyer trying really hard to fend off Tao, but I don't think he's quite got the horsepower to do that. As uh, the much more experienced Matthias Taub, who's uh, both these guys have actually done a lot of road racing in their careers. In fact, Kevin Dwyer's background is uh, not only road racing, but sprint cars as well. He's kind of done a little bit of everything uh, before uh, his Master Cup Series career took off. It was Kevin Dwyer, uh, after his sprint car career, took, uh, like a brief uh, foray in sprint cars, went to TM Lights and at the same time did a little bit of sports car racing on the side. Uh, and of course, scored a uh, couple of wins in a uh, P2 car. A couple of class wins, that is, not an overall win in uh, sporting car events. Now here is uh, the uh, number seven car of Jose Luis Martinez. As I mentioned earlier, he's been running a little bit further back and he's not going to be kept by Cats of Engineering. He's looking for a drive next year, but uh, oh, that's not going to help matters when the uh, I have mechanical problems called an engine failure. So Martinez unfortunately drops out of the race. The Mexican driver I think has done a, a very solid job, a very respectable job in this car. He's proved that uh, his Daytona win was not a fluke at all. He's done very, very well. And that's uh, very sad for Martinez to drop out of the race. Now here's Anthony Griffith. And um, I wonder if he's got a rail line going on because it looks like he's got a huge choo-choo train of cars directly behind him. He's uh, uh, really being a bit of a nuisance, but at the same time, great defensive driving. He's able to keep a huge stack of cars behind him. And in fact, he's doing a bit of a hatchet job on uh, everyone's race back there. Lena Roderick's back there. Chris Hans is back there. Mika Pasanen's back there, that's Lewis Kingston there as well. So a lot of cars, he's just holding them all up. And uh, he's off cycle as far as pit strategy is concerned. And uh, well, I don't think you can really fault uh, Griffith for this, but here comes Ashby in turn 14. Zelda Ashby in the 55 going around him. Leonid Roderick at the back of the train here. He's sort of the caboose here. Well, Scott Bates is going to take up a role of caboose if he catches this pack. But anyways, Leonid Roderick in the number four car. That's the uh, sort of retro paint job it, uh, thing that he's going, that got going. Oh, Lewis Kingston is off in the 17 car. He just left his braking way too late in that car. So uh, Kingston going to drop way back, it looks like. Mika Pasanen is running in car number 12 from Majestic Motorsports. He's trying to get himself a drive, but he's got a tire problem, and he just passed pit in. Oh, that's got to be the absolute worst luck ever. And Mika Pasanen's going to lose several laps. Um, it was going to lose a lap at least just from that. Dale Roswell is running in 20th place. I don't know where Roswell will end up next year, but I wouldn't want a rule out a part-time ride for him somewhere. Remember, there is such a thing as the promoter's option next season. And there's a car off the side of the road, and that is Scott Bates in the 88 car. So the problems that uh, they had getting this car refired at the end of the first pit stop, apparently that's even bigger problems for Scott Bates. That's both the team EFR cars out, and that's even more gut-wrenching for them because they were both very, very competitive today. We now rejoin the battle of Leonid Roderick and Chris Johans. Roderick in the four. Of course, the four-time Master Cup champion, Chris Johans, two-time Marla champion. Roderick uh, not having an easy time getting by the 64 car, who's, uh, we understand, is going to be running that fan design livery at Decatur. So it'll be the only one of the fan design cars to be running at uh, Decatur. And Chris Johans gets, slides that thing into braking. Roderick comes alongside. And Roderick looks like he's going to have a little bit of an advantage coming into the bear trap. But, oh, wait, that's going to be the wrong side of the road to be on because... Of course, the final corners, left-handers. Roderick, though, gets a better run coming in. Christian Hans looks like he runs wide, though, and he's going to lose the advantage that I thought he should have had. Roderick takes the spot, uh, much to my surprise. So Roderick looks like he just uh, caught Christian Hans sleeping there. And Leonid Roderick will take the spot. And Anthony Griffith, as you might have just seen, heads into the pits in car 29. He is off-cycle. Charlie Waters is having a pretty good run in this uh, 
car number 30. On lap 18, he's running in 18. Well, we're not really sure where he's going to go next year, uh, since James Dalton's team is probably not going to be returning in any capacity. So I could see Charlie Waters going to the ASCC or to the Evans Motorsports Independent Trophy entry, and they could be running Lennard, which would be good to see Lennard back in the series. Lacoya, which is one of Lennard's brands, is already uh, in, going to be in next year. So uh, we'll have to see how Ch where Charlie Waters ends up. But good to see Evans Motorsports back as Charlie Waters comes. Oh, whoa! Charlie Waters way late on the brakes there. Coming inside Dale Roswell. Took Roswell by surprise. And Charlie Waters really making things exciting over there. He's been having a great run today. And uh, earlier in the year, we I was very critical of Charlie Waters being uh, sort of hitting everything with the pace car on the ice cream stand. But uh, looks like he's really cleaned up his act. And... He's really making things exciting back here in the back of the field. Here he comes. He's not try He's not done trying. He's really trying to get by Roswell. Almost wipes it out. But Charlie Waters in this 30 car, really showing the spirit that we saw when he was running the Independence Trophy and just, just lost out to Michael Sykes the very first time the Independence Trophy was run. It'd be good to see Charlie Waters and Evans Motorsports reunite. Maybe they could rekindle some magic. Ryan Matthews is in the 11 car, the uh, candy apple red car that won the fan vote between... Uh, his Brazil paint job and his New York paint job. This, of course, the rant, uh, car he ran in New York. Well, we're having a lot of time looking at this car because he's not been terribly fast. He's not had a good weekend at all in general. He's running in 21st and uh, just hasn't been on the pace this weekend. That's Greg Woodard, the 41, directly behind him. Arto Kakinen has uh, been back in the pits and, uh, well, as you can see, Davina Henson's put him a lap down. Frankly, his day can't really get much worse. He's 28th. He's now a lap down. And uh, I don't think he's got a whole lot of a shot at scoring too many points today. Um, unless, well, a huge catastrophe happens further up the field, and he's got even more problems. So his day, yeah, it can't get worse. As he's going to pull this car to a stop on the course, he's going to get uh, pushed off the track. And uh, Arto Kekkonen's day has just gone very, very sour. And in fact, it's over. Here's Marcus Leonard, the Marcus Leonard rail line. As you can see, Gaspar Souza is the uh, car right behind him. That is, uh, of course, Matthias Taub, Kevin Dwyer back there, Luciano Savarol, and Yulina Sova. And Adrian Devereaux is the caboose. So, uh, Devereaux looks like he's got a bit of a look up there. Marcus Leonard running in second place, and like Anthony Griffith, is doing a hatchet job in everyone's race back there. But uh, not only that, uh, this is exactly what Davina Henton wants to see because none of these cars are really going to be able to challenge Henton who's pulled out a massive lead as a result of Marcus Leonard. Henton is. It's the pit lane on lap 20. That is a scheduled pit stop. Gaspar D'Souza and Matthias Taub doing battle for position. And Taub and D'Souza playing very nice with each other. As um, Well, anyway, here's uh, everyone who pits on lap 21 trying to get one up on Henton here. Leonard and D'Souza appear to be the only takers. So... Oh, we got another. Here's uh, everyone in lap 22 now. As uh, Taub, Dwyer, looks like everyone else in on lap 22. Adrian Devereaux in, in, in as well in the one car. Zach Duff in the five coming in. Zach Duff having a great day so far. Zelda Ashby in. Leonard Roderick is rolling the dice. He's staying out on track in car number four. Um, <clears throat> someone else stay on. Oh, that is that is Henson that just went by. Of course, Henson already pit it. Roderick rolls the dice. I'm not on uh, fuel strategy, it looks like. I wonder if that's uh, just uh, playing with fire a little bit because Roderick might run out of fuel and stop on track, and that would be very devastating for his championship bid. Uh, and here is the uh, 18 car of Azuma Kaziyama. Oh, and stop picking up Melanie Cleveno already. She's been hit by enough things already. She's had a miserable enough day. <laughs> I mean, uh, Kaziyama in the 18 car just ran straight in the back of Cleveno. He might have lost the brakes on that car. I could believe that if that was the case, but uh, he's going to be, he uh, eliminates himself in that move right there. Henson still leading in car number six after that cycle of pit stops. Uh, Adrian Devereaux dropped back a little bit, dropped to behind Anthony Griffith again in the 29 car. Uh, Lewis Kingston dropped back a bit as well. Packer, Carroll, and Blake Camphausen really working their way through the field, especially that 15 car. Uh, as we, uh, Danny Sabin, as you see there, is in 19th place. Danny Sabin in 19th, Gaspar D'Souza in third for the Independence Trophy battle. And I think if the race would end right now, uh, it would be very, very close. But I think it would go to Danny Sovin. We're going to have to wait and see how that turns out, though. Here is Packer Carroll in uh, car number two. He's, uh, of course, I mentioned he won earlier in the year at Road Gatineau and uh, was one of the most emotional wins of the year. Uh, was certainly one of the most as I've seen since Alexis Rainsford was running in here. 
I wonder if Davina Henton's drive today is a sign that she's finally comfortable behind the wheel of a Master Cup Series car, and or that Carroll may just be waiting for 2013 when he'll have that man, Leonid Roderick, in the four as a teammate. Because uh, I haven't seen the same Packer Carroll uh, pretty much ever since Indy. He seems, his form seems to have fallen off a little bit, and uh, Henton has had the better of him lately. Here's Adrian Devereaux, car number one. Um, <clears throat> he's been having a very solid day. That's exactly what he needs in order to uh, really boost his title hopes, especially when his teammate, Luciano Savarol, is also having a good run. Oh, no! devereaux has got problems in car number one. More mechanical gremlins for the Hodges Walter boys. But he is very close to the pits, and uh, he's going to bring that car to the service of his crew, and they change left side tires, refuel the car, and send him back out. Hopefully, hopefully uh, that'll fix his problems. Devereaux in the number one car is going to do a lap, but, um, well, we're going to have to see. Uh, no, looks like he's radioed that that is not the case. He's got more problems, and he's brought the car back in the pits the next lap, and it's going to be a while before he rejoins the race, I believe, because he's got some very serious mechanical difficulties on the left side of the car, apparently. Here is uh, the uh, car number four of Leonid Roderick and Anthony Griffith in the 29. Griffith really trying to hold up Roderick. There's Blake Camphouse in the 15 car. He's having a great day today. It's a shame that Camphausen won't be retained by uh, a full-time team in all likelihood because he's given that car a, a hell of a drive. Same with Anthony Griffith in this 29 car, but as you see there, 29 car off cycle. He's in the pits again. He's uh, doing the best he can under the circumstances, though. Kevin Dwyer is uh, really trying to heat up the battle with Matthias Tau, but as you see right now, he's, oh, gets a good run coming um, through the first part of the mousetra or the bear trap, sorry, and um, not able to really close the deal there. Uh, Packer Carroll in car number two. <laughs> Looks like he's going to have some minor problem with the car, either that or there's just a miscommunication with the pits because he just lets the 17 car of Lewis Kingston go by, and uh, I really don't know why he did that. He I guess he must have just figured out that the 17 was for position because uh, immediately after the 17 went by uh, and cleared him, it looked like he may have uh, just remembered that uh, the 17 was racing him for position. Either that or there was a hiccup with the engine or something, but I didn't uh, particularly hear something. That might have been the case, though. And uh, if that's the case, I wonder if the same problem may plague Davina Henton, uh, who is leading the race by a rather substantial margin. And uh, Packer Carroll, car number two is uh, going to get by Lewis Kingston in the far inferior moto. Here is uh, Marcus Leonard who leads the final uh, cycle of pit stops on lap 30 with Gaspar Souza. And Yelena Sova pits on lap 30 as well in car number 8. So the uh, the Katsup team going to service that car. Chris Johans in as well in car 64. Uh, the uh, Tramwell Knight there. Here's Davina Henton. She pits on lap 31. Uh, Davina Henton in the Volpe. The other will be, of course, Packer Carroll. Here is Kevin Dwyer, who is uh, going to stay out next to lap. It's Matthias Taub, also in the pits on lap 31 in the uh, number 10 car. Uh, Scott Bates in as well, but Bates way down the order, kind of uh, well out of contention. Here is Charlie Waters in car number 30. Greg Woodard directly behind him in the Lycoya. Uh, Woodard, of course, may be, uh, well, kind of a stablemate, de facto stablemate of Charlie Waters, because, of course, if Waters goes to Evans Motorsports and they get a Lennard car. Of course, Lennard owns Lycoya, so it's not unrealistic to suggest that uh, they'll get the same engines that Power Steering Incorporated will use on their Lycoyas next season. Wouldn't that be great to see Evans Motorsports back in the field? They usually brought some great looking cars and uh, some very colorful personalities, so hopefully uh, they'll be able to mount a credible run. Speaking of a credible Independence Trophy run, here's Gaspar D'Souza, and he is certainly making the most of uh, the, fi the final Independence Trophy race this year because as of right now, Independent Trophy goes to D'Souza. He would, if the race would end right now, he would do the impossible, take home the Independent Trophy. By the way, a big shout out back there to Chris Allen, back there in 20th place. Danny Savin and Chris uh, and uh, Gaspar D'Souza are going to be making this Independent Trophy battle very close. Of course, Tom Moore is sitting on pins and needles right now, but uh, Danny Savin, I think, only needs to get around about one or two more cars. But it's going to be very close either way. Danny Savin, car number 81. Full Throttle Racing has really worked hard on this on this car to get this car as high up as it has been in the Independence Trophy. We didn't really uh, account this car, think that this car, or D'Souza for that matter, would be serious factors for the Independence Trophy, but they have been. Here's Sison Lautenschlager in the Tutino. I haven't seen too much of him today uh, because, well, Tutino's been in their usual territory, way back behind everyone else, as he is a couple of laps down, and I don't really understand why he's racing Matthias Taub like he's battling for the win. 
Uh, Tyson Lounschlager and uh, Dutino have not exactly had the most been the most courteous pair out there. Uh, he's been, uh, well, a little bit of a nuisance apparently to Taub, and I think Taub is getting a little fed up with that. Taub going to set up Lounschlager for turn nine. I think he's rather annoyed that he has to work this hard to get by a Dutino who's not exactly making his life easy. Taub shakes his fist at Lautenschlager in the uh, uh, 42 car under braking uh, as they were alongside, but Lautenschlager is, well, not seating, the sp uh, not seating the place, and as a result, he's making it very difficult for Taub to realistically catch Julian Asova, which would be a battle for position, and they're both well in the top five. As Nasova beginning to hound Gaspar D'Souza there in the zero car, so D'Souza has to defend that spot if he wants to hold on to the independent trophy, but now Taub furious with Tyson Lautenschlager as he goes by. Uh, courtesy, clearly, uh, not exactly in Lautenschlager's vocabulary today. But now, coming on the next time by, oh, it looks like the 10 car just lost a little bit under braking. He's going to lose a spot. He gets Lautenschlager goes by. Kevin Dwyer almost got hooked there by Luciano Savarol. Big stack up there. And now Taub is going to have to deal with the 42 car all over again. Uh, Kevin Dwyer, though, is now going to be set up by Luciano Savarol in turn 14. Dwyer going to try to hang on. He's trying his hardest to hang on to the spot. Savarol, though, in the Colt Morrell Altair, trying to get him under braking, and it looks like he's going to do it. Kevin Dwyer gave it everything he had, but not enough. She leaves Volpe Racing Team at the end of this season. She's been criticized for not trying hard enough or for making too many errors in her career, but Davina Henton will take home the checkered flag for the first time in her TM Master Cup Series career in style by dominating here at the HLR circuit. Uh, her teammate Packer Carroll in car number two did not fare as well. A massive Volpe engine failure on the final lap of the race took Packer Carroll out of a solid points for finish for Volpe Racing Team. But it was a very, very emotional celebration for Davina Henton, brought nearly to tears on the podium, and only the third driver to score a perfect 70. Marcus Leonard and Gaspar D'Souza round out the podium. I don't think anyone would have expected either one of those guys would have been on the podium today. Of course, Leonard defended his front row starting position very well, but finished 18 seconds adrift of Davina Henson. Talk about domination. Yulina Sova in fourth, Matthias Taub fifth. Luciano Savarol did very well today. Going further down the field, you'll notice Leonid Roderick in the top 10 as well. Adrian Devereaux and Arto Kakinen had disastrous days. Kakinen dropped out midway through the race. Adrian Devereaux, well, all those mechanical problems cost them six laps in total. In 18th place was Chris Allen, who should pat himself on the back for a job well done in the 426 Motorsports car. And Danny Sauvin in car number 81 gets a top 20 for FTR. But it wasn't enough to stop Gaspar D'Souza from doing the impossible, getting a podium and winning the Independence Trophy by just four points over Danny Sauvin. Tom Moore bumped down to third in a thrilling finish for the Independence Trophy. Look how close that points battle was. Speaking of a close points battle, we've got one race to go and only 11 points separating the top three in the Drivers' Championship. And correct me if I'm mistaken, but I believe fourth is the lowest Adrian Devereaux has been all season in the championship. Leonid Roderick and Luciano Sauber all take over positions one and two in the championship. As you can quite clearly see, every point counts, and uh, our four title protagonists will be on almost equal ground with one race to settle it. No pressure there, but none of them are locked in for the final race of the 2012 TM Master Cup Series season. Round of Decatur at the famous Decatur Raceway.